Keir Starmer's emphasis on dismantling criminal gangs as a central strategy to tackle the small boats crisis uh, reflects his particular shift in the UK's migration approach. But of course, no one is going to question whether or not we should be dismantling the uh, trafficking and smuggling gangs. Everybody would agree with that. The question is whether or not it can be done. I personally think that it is the right approach, that we should be punishing and uh, searching for the gangs rather than punishing the victims of slavery and trafficking. But at the same time, I don't think there's much likelihood that we're going to be successful. This is like attacking or this is like pursuing the gangsters running drugs. And while previous government efforts like the controversial Rwanda deportations plan uh, focused on deterrence and attacking the victims, Starmer's government is advocating a different method targeting the criminal organizations that profit from the desperation of the migrants. Yes. But actually what we need to do is to provide the migrants with an alternative route, an alternative um, methodology. So effectively eradicating the need for the smuggling and the trafficking gangs, getting rid of them. In the recent summit chaired by the Home Secretary Yvette Cooper, Starmer reiterated that addressing the root cause of the problem, human trafficking gangs, will yield more sustainable results than simply deterring migrants. He's right. Deterring people who are already desperate is not a deterrence. Uh, the strategy that he's got, he argues, directly confronts those exploiting vulnerable people, including children, by endangering their lives in perilous crossings across the Channel. And the deaths of 12 people um, on the French coast exemplify the uh, deadly risks involved. Uh, and so many um, of those people who died, the children who weren't wearing any, any form of life jackets, extraordinary the contempt that the smugglers and the traffickers have for human life is palpable the approach described by Starmer as bearing down on smuggling operations marks a divergence from past policies and it may attract um, support it may it may equally attract um, mixed reactions. Uh, on the one hand, dismantling criminal networks offers a long-term solution by cutting off the supply chain that fuels illegal crossings. But on the other hand, uh, critics would argue that without stronger border enforcement and deterrence such as the Rwanda plan, the issue of irregular migration will persist. I would say there's a third issue, and that is that we have to offer safe and legal routes. So making the reliance on smugglers unnecessary. People who are turning to smugglers are turning to the only people who seem to know what is going on. And that means getting the word out that there is a particular route that people can take. And I'm aware of this problem because I looked into it uh, and, and, and I've got some sort of personal dealings with it from the early part of the 20th century. And I am fully aware of the anxiety, the desperation of people to leave their home country and leave a situation which has become untenable. There are solutions. One is to sort out that situation. Another is to provide a, a legal framework for them to cross. A third situation, of course, is to rely on the ever-present undercurrent of smuggling and trafficking. Who do you turn to if you are a, a person in desperation? You turn to the first person who speaks. And that's likely to be uh, somebody with criminal connections. So we need to get the word out. And getting the word out is probably more important than this sort of heavy fist operation because it's like the hydra. Once you knock off one head, another two will grow up in its place. 
Yvette Cooper highlighted the, that although the crossings decreased in July and August, smuggling gangs are still active. I think the decrease was moderate. And in fact, if anything, the numbers of illegal migrants or migrants arriving on our shores has increased this year from last year. Absolutely. And why do I hesitate about calling them illegal migrants? Because that is the definition that was imposed on these people by Suella Bravman, by the Nationality and Borders Act and the Illegal Migration Act in 2022 and 2023. Both of these acts need to be repealed because they mean nothing. Under the 1951 Refugee Convention, somebody may um, approach a country like ours by an illegal route, by an unregulated route, but the moment that they arrive in our country and claim asylum, then they are legalised until or unless that asylum is rejected. This is something that Suella Bravman herself acknowledged when she was questioned in a uh, parliamentary committee hearing by Tim Lawton on the 22nd of November, just before the first of her three absurd uh, migration bills became law. And the priority of this present government would be to strengthen international cooperation, to use operational summits to increase pressure on these gangs and to reduce the allure of dangerous channel crossings for migrants. But it's that threefold thing. And that third one needs to be about publicity and about sending a message to people in desperation. That means sending messages in different languages. We can't just do it in English. Ultimately, Starmer's gang-bashing, gang-smashing approach aligns with the broader vision of a more humane and effective migration policy. But the challenge lies in whether his approach can both reduce crossings and satisfy critics who advocate for tougher deterrence measures. I don't think deterrence works. I think we have to find an alternative. Put forward the alternative and the deterrent is automatic.